Hey folks, I went on the streets of Chicago late at night, it's downtown so it's all safe, to test out a new piece of equipment. If you're into filmmaking gear, we'll talk about it at the end of the video. If you're not, totally cool, just enjoy the video. Chicago at night. Is I 
thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking the time as always. Uh, I would love to read your comments. Please leave them in the comment section below. Give it a like if you haven't done so yet and you like my videos, give it a subscribe and just see what I'm doing. So for those of you who are into cinematography or if you're just curious about filmmaking, I will now talk about anamorphic lenses. And just talk a bit about the history, what effects it has on your image and what gear I actually use for this video. Anamorphic lenses were invented in the times where TVs were on the rise and the 4x3 format was so common now that cinema needed to differentiate itself. What the movie industry came up with is a lens that stretches the, the, the image and therefore gives you a wider field of view. So what it means is like on the actual sensor the image is stretched and I'm gonna do it right now. So you see, this is basically what the sensor records. So what I do then in post is I basically de-squeeze it again. So eventually it looks normal, but you have a wider field of view. So a 50 millimeter lens is 33% wider in this case. I used to fake it with these black bars, the letter boxes, and uh, lose a lot of information there because I just throw it away. Second optical feature of anamorphic lenses are oval bokeh. So spherical lenses have a round bokeh just as normal lenses are formed, but because anamorphic lenses stretch the image, uh, the bokeh is basically oval and it gives you a really nice and interesting look. Third optical feature of an anamorphic lens are light streaks. You may know them from J.J. Abrams' Star Trek movie where he overused it a tiny bit. He admitted it. But I think it gives you a really cool, interesting look as well. And you're familiar, our brains are primed thinking this is cinema. So these are the three major optical features of anamorphic lenses. And anamorphic lenses are freaking expensive. I mean, we're talking about, about 10, 20K to get a decent lens. Though there are some really cool alternatives in the market these days where you can still create this anamorphic stretched cool look. Some people are hacking the system by using these old projector adapters. They put on these old film projectors to de-squeeze basically uh, anamorphically filmed images and just put it on a lens and hack it that way. The other solution are specifically built adapters for your camera that you put on a normal spherical lens and you screw it on and it basically stretches your image and has all these cool optical features of an anamorphic lens. This is what I used in this video and will use in future videos. The specific model I used is the Anamorphot by SLR Magic. It's the 1.33x50 model. In case you are wondering, I will link it down below in the description. And the taking lens I used was the Nifty 50, 50 millimeter 1.8 by Canon, the plastic lens. And it gives you this really nice image still. A few words of experience now, like shooting with it one night. It's all manual, first of all. The trickiest piece, I would argue, is the double focusing because you're not only focusing on your taking lens, but also on the adapter. And sometimes, especially in near distance, it's a bit more tricky to find the sweet spot. Other than that, I, 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 I really like it because I'm shooting manual anyway, so uh, for me, it was, uh, was a pleasure to just try it out and get this stretched image. One, one more tip I can give you is if you can, try to use a monitor because what the image will look like on your display on the camera is very, very stretched out and it's much harder to focus and compose your image that way. But most even cheap monitors like I'm using right now are able to zoom in and de-squeeze basically the image right away and then you can frame it perfectly and focus and just have fun with it. So this is it. If you like the combination of, you know, just like a little clip and then talking about it right after, let me know. I would love to do more of these kind of videos where I talk about a specific gear or about a specific technique. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, share it with your friends who might be interested in watching this. I really appreciate your support. I want to do more of these videos and you guys motivate me. And with that, I wish you a wonderful morning, wonderful night, wonderful afternoon, wherever, whenever you are around the world. Thank you. Bye bye.